Hello everybody and welcome back to the Manchester United save here on FM21. Today's episode, we're going to be playing Juventus in our Champions League group stage game alongside West Ham in the Premier League. But let's go check out the fixtures since the last time we met. So following on from the 5-2 victory against Wolves in the Premier League, we then smashed Krasnodar 3-1 in the Champions League group stage. As you can see by the match stats, we didn't actually convert as many chances as we probably should have been. And uh, we conceded one in like the 95th minute. David De Gea own goal wasn't too clever. But we got the win and the three points, which is all that matters. We then had a very, very tight game against Everton away from home back in Premier League action. A 1-0 win. Bruno Fernandes with a penalty. We'll take it where it comes. Wasn't a great performance by any means, but a win's a win. And that sees our tables looking like this. We currently sit in fifth place in the Premier League. Three points behind league leaders Manchester City who have won every single game since they got beat by Spurs in the opening game of the season. There's only ourselves and Chelsea who are unbeaten, but obviously the amount of draws we've had has been a little bit of a concern. And then looking at Group B in the Champions League, level on points with Juventus, very, very similar goal difference as well. So today's game is going to be massive to determine who will end up finishing top of this group. And just looking around the rest of the groups in the Champions League, no massive surprises as to what's happening so far. Lazio, top of that group, uh, you would imagine Borussia Dortmund are likely to qualify. Olympic Marseille are going to have something to say about that. And so that's a tough, that's very, very similar teams all grouped together in that one. But uh, everything else looks pretty standard. Real Madrid have got beat. Man City away from home 2-1. Atlanta, FC Porto not doing so hot. But yeah, it's we need to finish top. I'd much rather play one of these second place teams if possible. Just in general, looking at the squad and stuff, Bruno Fernandes is absolutely loving the advanced playmaker role playing in behind the striker. Obviously being our set-piece taker as well, mainly for free kicks and one side of our corners. He's getting a lot of assists from that. Harry Maguire, his three goals have all came from corners. Uh, Alex Tellez playing great at left-back. Not really getting involved in the attacking play as much as I would like, but as long as he's producing these sorts of performances, I'm absolutely fine by that. One of the players who I'm looking for a lot more from is Marcus Rashford. Haven't quite found the right um, balance within the squad to get him really scoring and assisting. And Kingsley Coleman hasn't really hit the ground running either. I think Mason Greenwood is going to get the nod today for both games and see how he performs against the big boys Juventus, against Cristiano Ronaldo and then against West Ham in the Prem. So this is how we're going to line up for today's game. A pretty standard team. We have dropped one of the central midfielders back to a defensive midfield role. Just to give us that little bit extra support against the better teams. The likes of Juventus. Hopefully we can control possession a little bit better. Having that anchor point to be able to spread it out to the full backs. And Paul Pogba in particular. Anthony Martial misses out today's game. He was injured in the last game. He is pretty much back to full fitness. So he can play today. But he is going to drop to the bench. Edinson Cavani comes in up top. Marcus Rashford keeps his place. He probably would have been dropped for Martial had he been fully fit. Bruno Fernandes and Mason Green would complete our attack. And Paul Pogba and Benton Coe in the centre. Tellez, Maguire, Luis Felipe, Juan Basaka and David De Gea lead the uh, complete our first 11. Let's get into the game and see how we get on against UV. Uh, who's concerned? Lax, ah, whatever. Eric Bay, whatever. They're not, they're not happy that I've changed formation. That's basically what I'm saying. And here is that Juventus side. It's a very... Demiral was someone I really, really wanted in the summer transfer window, but unfortunately would have cost a little bit too much money. Demiral, Benucci, Chiellini and Chesney in their defence. Federico Chiesa and Alexandro, I'm guessing, are wing-backs. Arthur, Rabiot, Dybala, Kulisevsky and Cristiano Ronaldo are leading the line, of course. Uh, they haven't really got that many familiar names to me, at the very least, on the bench. Maratta, Weston McKenney, Bernadeschi, <coughs> Danilo, of course, from uh, Manchester City. But I think... I think we've got a chance here. I don't think they're that much better than us, if better than us at all. Uh, but they've obviously got Cristiano Ronaldo, which could be the difference maker. First highlight of the game is a Bruno Fernandes corner. Maguire gets his head on it. Can't get it on target. It goes to the back post, but we do manage to get ourselves another corner from it. Alex Tellez is the man to whip it in. Uh, and it's cleared. The highlight is still continuing from the corner. Chance of Mason Greenwood. That is a dirty little dink over Chesney. Is he offside? I don't think he is. Is there going to be a VAR check? I'm not too sure. I think it was Benton Kerr who ended up playing the ball over the top. And it is a goal. Alex Tellers and Benton Kerr combining alongside Bruno Fernandes. Then a lovely little ball over the top leaves the defence. Oh, that's such a beautiful goal. Mason Greenwood, my son. 
I think he's uh, taken uh, what's his face Kingsley Coleman's spot at the minute. We are still on the attacking mentality, which might be a pretty big mistake, but we're playing well at the minute, at least going by the match stats. So I'm hesitant to really make too many changes as Marcus Rashford finds his way into the box. Bruno Fernandes and again hits the post. And Chesney claims the ball, which will be 2 0 up. Another highlight now Dybala clears the ball for Juventus, but Wamba Saka picks it up. There's absolutely nobody. They're not playing a high press at all. Cristiano Ronaldo's just sitting there, just waiting for the ball to arrive at his feet. And it's allowing us the time and the space to be able to knock it about between the defence and the midfield and retain possession. But just don't lose it, boys. Rashford manages to find Edinson Cavani in behind. And it's another lob over the keeper. And we find ourselves 2-0 up against the Juventus. Away from home. Cavani's sixth goal of the season. And it was a really well-worked goal. Juventus did start pushing up and pressing us. As you can see, their line's getting much, much higher. Allowing Rashford to be able to pick up that pass. And Cavani... Oh, that is a superb finish. 32 minutes gone, and there is another highlight. We do give the ball away, but thankfully, at least it's in their defensive area, and Benton Kerr picks a back up Ronaldo with a slide challenge. Benton Kerr doesn't care. He's playing against his former club. He wants to absolutely mug them off. Alex Tellez to Marcus Rashford on this left-hand side. He was running for the overlap. Gets the ball a little earlier than he would have expected, and Mark Rashford's brought down. That is a penalty, surely. Was it in the box, though? That's the only question. We're going to VAR. We'll have to watch the referee run to the monitor. I thought this was over. Penalty review check-in. VAR, what are you saying? Penalty has been awarded. Bruno Fernandes will be the man stepping up to put us 3-0 up against you. Oh, wait, man. Oh, wait, Sports Interactive. Cut that bit out. We don't need to see the referee running back to the player. Uh, Bruno Fernandes then against Wojciech Szczesny. Can he score? He can. Szczesny goes the right way. Can't quite get enough uh, to get there. And we find ourselves 3-0 up with inside 35 minutes against Juve. Loving it. Only four minutes to go before half-time. Alexandro with a throw-in in our half. Finds Ronaldo in behind. And yeah, you can't give Ronaldo that sort of time and space. Juve get one back. And uh, <laughs> starting to get a little bit edgy, shall we? Maybe a balanced team mentality. This might end up costing us. I don't like changing it when things are going well. But um, I'm scared now, and Chiesa is coming down the right-hand side for Juve. Ronaldo's not really supporting him, but he goes for goal himself. Thankfully, we pick up the ball. I mean, yeah. Oh, David De Gea gives the ball away from the kick, and Chiesa's in behind. Goes wide. And there we have it, half-time. Juventus 1, Manchester United 3. The game is getting a lot, lot closer, particularly the second half of that first half. We've got two goals to the good. I'm very pleased with your performance, lads. We'll just get to the second half and see how things go for the first 15, 20 minutes. Looking at the match stats, it's been pretty much all Juventus for the first 15 minutes of the second half. And they have themselves a highlight. Kulis Kulisevsky, or whatever his name is, plays the ball over the top. Alex Tellez is the man to get there first and we can clear it with Rashford and Pogba. Pogba finds Tellez, who finds Rashford on this left-hand side. Cavani's in behind again. And Edinson Cavani is so clinical. He just finishes them chances, giving half a yard... And we find ourselves back with a three-goal advantage. Probably a little bit undeserved, as you'll see by the match stats once they come back up. But I don't really care that much. We're going to get the three points in today's game, hopefully. 30 minutes left. I can't see them coming back now. And Edinson Cavani's seventh goal of the season. Bruno Fernandes with a free kick. 70 minutes gone. Bonucci manages to clear. And is this going to be a counter-attack of dreams for Juventus? Ronaldo beats one, finds uh, Kulisevsky. Who's in behind? Can David here save us? No, he cannot. Dejan Kulisevsky's fifth goal of the season. And uh, again, just to maybe need to drop that line a little bit. I don't think the line was the problem there. But um, obviously losing the ball in their third. Our midfield was completely out of position. Allowed Ronaldo to push through the centre and cost us. With about 15 minutes left to go, we will look to make some changes. Benton Kerr. He's having a good game, but he should probably come off. We'll bring on Emmanuel Matic in that defensive midfield. Well, Marcus Rashford can come off for Anthony Martial. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, Danny Von Den Beek. Go on, son. Get yourself on. Only a few minutes to go in this game. It looks like we're going to get ourselves the three points. Anthony Martial's driving down this left-hand side. It finds Alex Tellez. Not too many options in the box. They're slowly arriving, but Demiral defends well. Oh, it's going to be a counter. Alvaro Morata. Picks up the clearance. He's in behind. David De Gea. What a save that is. That's exactly what David De Gea is good at. And thankfully he saves us there. But there is going to be a corner for um, Juventus to play it in. It's cleared by us. And full time is approaching us. 
Juventus 2, Manchester United 4. Probably our best win so far in this save. It was a very, very even game going by the match stats. But we've managed to do it and get the three points, which puts us comfortably top of our Champions League group. So as you can see there, Krasnodar and Midtjylland haven't quite played their game. So uh, we are now three points clear from Juventus in second. It looks like we're both going to comfortably qualify from our group. And hopefully if we can avoid defeat in the return fixture against UV, we'll finish top as well. So coming up next is West Ham at home. <laughs> Didn't mess it up against West Ham after you've just beat Juventus, boys. I'll see you at kickoff. So no real injury concerns or any conditioning concerns from our starting eleven. We have dropped on Marcus Rashford and we're going to start Anthony Martial on that left-hand side. Cavani keeps his spot. Mason Greenwood keeps his spot. Everything else is unchanged. Let's get to the game against West Ham and hopefully pick up another three points. The boys are pretty happy with the tactics now. Seem a little bit more familiar with the formation change and uh, they've stopped whinging. Looks like a pretty much standard West Ham side. No major changes there. I was looking at Declan Rice in the summer as well, who would have been a nice sign-in, but... Uh, a little bit pricey, let's just say that. Let's get to the game and see how we get on against West Ham. So there's a highlight straight from kickoff, I think. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Anthony Martial drives into the centre, finds Greenwood. We go all the way back to Benton Kerr. Um, just keeping possession, which is fine by me, as long as we are showing some forward impetus that, uh, I mean, yeah, whatever. This can't be a pointless highlight. It's shown as 40 seconds of the game already. This can't be pointless. Martial from Pogba into Cavani. He's in behind. And Edinson Cavani gets his eighth goal of the season and puts us 1-0 up at home against West Ham. It wasn't a wasted highlight. I was just a little bit pessimistic. But some decent play between the midfield. We retain possession this whole time. They've never touched the ball yet. And Martial with a lovely little through ball finding Cavani and maybe showing why he should be starting over Marcus Rashford. Another highlight now. It's took another 25 minutes to get our second highlight, but Mason Greenwood picks up the throw-in. He drives into the box and goes for goal. Decent save by Fabianski. Cavani keeps it uh, alive. I'm assuming that was the highlight, but yeah, it was the highlight. I think Bruno Fernandes is probably going to come off at half-time. He's played a lot of football recently, and uh, you can see by his heart, even if it's not as clear as if it was numbers, um, that he'd probably have to come off. We'll get on Van den Beek in for him in attack and midfield, and we'll kick off for the second half. Another 15 minutes of the second half goes by. Not a lot happening. We're going to take off Mason Greenwood. And we'll bring on Kingsley Coleman on that right-hand side. He's struggling a little bit. Um, hasn't really been involved in the game today. A 6.6 .6 average rating. Not the best. But uh, hopefully Kingsley can come on with fresh legs and cause West Ham some problems. As he picks up the ball there. He drives forward into the middle. And he's shooting. Appears to be a weak point. Another highlight now. Ben and Kerr on a yellow card. So he needs to be careful. Picks up the ball in the centre of the park and Alex Tellez can drive down the left-hand side, finding Paul Pogba inside. Back out of Benton Co. Goes for goal. Would have been nice. How is David to here on a 6.3? I mean, I don't really know. The goalkeeper rating same all over the shop. We'll get Rodrigo Benton Co. off. We'll bring Vanden Beek back to that defensive midfield spot. And, oh, I haven't got what's his face on the bench. We're going to put Marcus Rashford in behind the striker. Uh... Give him some game time, see if he can do anything with his short time on the pitch. But it looks like this game's going to sort of peter out. West Ham haven't really come at us since we went 1-0 up. I think they were just happy to keep the score up 1-0. And we take the three points. Edinson Cavani's goal in the first minute sailing it. Expected goals of 2.62, so we were a little bit wasteful in the final third, at least going by that stat. But three points is three points. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We now sit in fifth position. We do have a game in hand on pretty much everyone around us. So we could get ourselves up to third place if we win that game in hand behind Liverpool and Manchester City. Someone needs to stop Manchester City. But good news is we are now the only unbeaten team in the league. Chelsea have been beaten by Newcastle away from home. Looking at the top scorers, Timo Werner on 12, Lacazette on 8, Bachawi on 7. But I'm pretty sure four of them came in one game. Mohamed Salah, best average rating, best assister. Player of the match is Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, I'm wanting to see some more of our boys there. Hopefully that will come with time. But anyway, boys, if you could do me a favour and leave a like on this video, it would be highly appreciated. And get yourself subscribed. I'm hoping to get to 1,000 subscribers at some point within the next decade. But anyway, lads, until next time, take it easy.